Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Friendly City Books podcast. I am your host, Caroline, and with me today is Suzanne Enoch. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. Suzanne Enoch is a native and current resident of Southern California. She has written more than 40 Regency novels and historical romances, including the New York Times bestselling Scandalous Brides and Scandalous Highlander series. Her new novel, Every Duke Has His Day, comes out September 19th. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for, for talking with me today. Oh, thanks for inviting me. It's like being out of the house, but still being able to wear comfy clothes. So it's nice. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Um, so I just want to start off by saying that Every Duke Has His Day is so cute. And I absolutely loved reading this book. And I think it is absolutely perfect for our romance readers and pet lovers in our store. <laughs> Thank you. It was um, fun to write. Yeah. Uh, so the romance in Every Duke Has His Day feels very much like an opposites attract relationship between two very well-matched equals. Uh, our romantic lead, uh, Michael Bromley, the Duke of Warrington, has this analytical mind. He's very eccentric, maybe a little aloof. Um, and he would rather spend his time doing scientific experiments than attending society events. Meanwhile, our heroine, Bitsy, is the diamond of the season. She is vivacious and capable and very much feels like a woman of her own making. Uh, after writing so many books, what inspires you to keep creating such dynamic heroines and romantic leads? It, it just keeps happening. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's so much going on during the Regency period that it's really not difficult at all to find a slightly different angle on things. If it was a a more boring time in the world, it, it would be much more difficult, I think. But considering it's only 10 years, there's a lot of stuff stuffed in there. And it's just, it's enjoyable. It's like taking a little dive every time I go and start researching for something new. Mm -hmm. I also love that Michael was so much of a like maybe unconventional romantic lead. You know, he isn't this big hulking heartthrob. He's very more, much more like cerebral. And I always think it's really nice to see different types of romantic leads represented in romance. So that was really fun for me too. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was fun researching him. I did, I kind of based him loosely on Michael Faraday, the premium inventor of the of the time i even where am i there i am <laughs> I, that's one of his uh, lectures that he gave so uh -huh. i got that and there's also this awesome book may i say oh i keep not finding it <laughs> and this book was actually published in 1818 and by a woman and it is what i based a lot of the chemistry stuff on because then i knew what had been invented at the time, what was going mm -hmm. on, what was cutting edge back then. And it turned, it was very helpful, but it was different not doing a guy who, you know, just rode horses and, and none such his way around the country. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I was going to ask you, I mean, obviously science plays such a huge role in this book with Michael being such a passionate scientist. Um, but just, I feel like I would have been so scared to write something with so much science in it where it's like, I know I have to get these scientific things right, but then also have them right for the period that I'm writing in, uh, you know, and cause if you're not right on it, someone will let you know. I'm waiting. Someone will let me know <laughs> I, got, I got something wrong. I mean, I really tried because, you know, a couple of the things that they used back then and when as fact weren't exactly correct or they were nearby correct, but not quite. But, you know, that's the point of view I'm writing from. So I guess if I get questioned, I can say, well, that's how they did it back then. I, <laughs> that's going to be my fallback. He's kind of, the whole story is kind of really loosely based on bringing up Baby, the, the romantic comedy starring Catherine Hepburn and Cary Grant, where he is a paleontologist and she's kind of the ditzy woman about town. So... I mean, it's very loosely based on that, but that's kind of where the characters were coming from originally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I, the thing that I really loved about the book was just how endearing and kind your characters are. I mean, not only our main characters, uh, but a lot of our secondary players as well. There is a secondary romance in this book, which I, at the risk of spoiling anything, I don't want to give too much away because it's so precious. But these two characters that could have been so evil... They ended up 
really being some of the most loving and wholesome people in the entire book. Um, so, and then at the same time, your villain in this book is just so detestable and fun to hate. And so <laughs> I was really wondering, what is it more fun for you to do as an author to, to write these really wonderful, lovable characters or a villain that's just a blast to despise? Villains are a little bit easier. Um, you actually have to kind of come at them from the same point of view because every I, I come at it from every person is the hero of their own story. The difference with the good people is that they kind of question other things around them and take other things into consideration, whereas the villain, it's just all about him. He's the one who needs to do stuff and people are doing things to him because they're no good and he <laughs> is. And so I think... When I like writing kind of nuanced characters. So in that sense, I like writing the, the hero's characters better. But on the other hand, there's some, just something that's like pure almost about writing a villain. So they're both enjoyable, but just in, in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Every Duke Has His Day is dedicated very sweetly to pet lover, lovers and to your pup, Tiki. Uh, will you tell me about Tiki, please? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tiki is half Shih Tzu and half something Shih Tzu-ish. We're not quite sure. <laughs> um, she came as a, as a pup. Uh, she was kind of my nephew's dog. He, live, he lives with me, but slowly over time, I think she liked the idea that I had this one place on the couch I like to sit every day where I like to write. And she just became my, my writing couch buddy. That's so, so sweet. She, yeah, she input had a lot of input on yeah. the story. Well, we have a very little beagle mix who is our shop dog named Scarlett, who is at the bookstore with us most days. Um, and it's so fun to just have her as a, like a comforting presence in the store. Uh, but then at home, I have two completely chaotic hound dogs who are just, <laughs> you know, they cannot be tamed. And I just I love how much you celebrate dogs in this book and also how you explore the relationship that we have with them. Um Michael's dog in the book is Lancelot, who is this very like prim and polite poodle uh, who is kind of thrust upon him by his aunt. Meanwhile, Bitsy's poodle is this uh, is Galahan, the demon dog, basically, uh, who gets in trouble at every turn but cannot be tied down, kind of like Bitsy. And I was kind of wondering what your thoughts are on this, because I'm always kind of ruminating on it. It, it. Do you think that dogs' personalities are a direct mirror of our own persona or can they kind of be the negative to the positive like Bitsy and, and uh, Bitsy and Michael? Is it po possible for me to be like both at the same time? Because <laughs> <laughs> in a way I did set the dogs up to be the equal of their mistresses or human friends or however we want to term it. But in essence, they do kind of reflect what that those people would tolerate and what they wouldn't tolerate. Bitsy is less regimented. And so she has a dog that's less regimented. Whereas Michael is very organized. And so his dog is more settled, but they're also very inconvenient at times, but that's good for you. I think it's good for us and it's good for them. Mm -hmm. I also really love that you know, Michael and Galahad had this relationship where they kind of, you know, no one could tame Galahad, but then maybe Michael could, you know, it's this kind of idea that he gave Galahad what he was missing, kind of like how he was also kind of giving Bitsy what she was missing as well. Um, so that was really fun to see as well. Um, uh, so obviously, this book is first and foremost a romance, but there's so much humor and levity to the story as well. Um, the dog napping plot adds this really exciting sleuthy element to it. It was so much fun to see Bitsy and Michael gallivant around London, chasing down clues, trying to crack the case. Um, as a romance author, how important is it to you to build a plot where your characters can thrive and find love, but also maybe happiness in themselves along the way? Oh, it's hugely important. I and mean, that's kind of where you start from. You start from these flawed characters and you have to find a way for their character to arc into something more fulfilling for them, more fulfilling for the reader. And you have, in order to make it realistic, you have to have this world around them that kind of fits with their tone. So I've written stories that are less light than this and London as a consequence is a little grittier 
place. But this is kind of a, a farce-ish type romp. And so London is a little nicer. It's like the Mary Poppins version of <laughs> London. <laughs> yeah. It felt almost like a cozy mystery and like a romance, a Regency romance had a baby almost, where it was just kind of this marriage of like every feel good element that you could get put into one. Thanks. I mean, that was the goal. I just wanted to write a story that when you close the book, you would just kind of sit down and, and smile and give a give a happy sigh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh, that's how I felt about the book. Like when I finished it, I was like, oh, my gosh, like anytime I have a friend who is going to be like, I'm in a reading slump or I read the most depressing book ever and I need something to pick me back up. I'm like, here you go. I know exactly what to recommend now, because that's just <laughs> sometimes that's what you need. And it's so Thanks. perfect to find a book like that. I like I like being the anti slump writer. That's good. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, now I know that you are a very big fan of Star Wars. I see your figurines behind you. Uh, <laughs> and I was, I'm also a big fan of the fantasy genre. And this is something that I've been trying to explain to people is that for me, Regency is my favorite type of fantasy. And I think it's because of how transportive it is. And while it is technically historical, it has all these fantastical elements and details that really kind of transport you and take you out of real life. Um, and so I was curious about the process of world building in a Regency romance, like how much time goes into researching it? How, how are you creating these worlds and, you know, having fun with this? Um, initially, I did a huge amount of research. Um, I have a wall of books that are all uh, they have something to do with the Regency, everything from the history of toilets to uh, how to raise bees in your in your stable yard and, and all that kind of stuff. And as I've gotten as I've written more and more books, I haven't had to individually do as much research because all that stuff is percolating in the back of my brain. But there are specific elements each time that I need to go into, like, for instance, for the, the science this time. And I, I had to look into dog ownership at the time and make sure that there were poodles in London at the time, but not a lot of poodles. And <laughs> so it was it's really interesting. Every Like I said, every time you go in, you find out something different. And I just I really like it. I mean, I think if I couldn't write, I would still be delving into history somehow. And yeah, oh, yeah I just, it's wonderful. <laughs> the region here is just, it's like the roaring 20s of the 1800s. Yes. Oh my gosh. Do you ever get to go to England or Scotland to do research? Uh, I have been to England. Yes. And oh, that was, I don't, I guess I re did research mostly. I just <laughs> looked around with my mouth hanging open, but <laughs> it's, it's a good excuse for, you know, is, to go. So is. you can be like, oh, it's for research, you know? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. if you, if you ever need a research assistant, I'm happy to assist. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll gladly get on the plane. Um, but I just, I was curious too, because you have written so many books, it, do you have specific worlds that you've created that you, you know, really, really love? Or do you like to kind of start from scratch with every book that you come into and just say, this is my new society that I'm placing in the same time period, but I'm starting fresh? I, I tend to to start fresh with every book, mostly because of tonality. Although I do have some characters who've made like cameo appearance appearances in several books um, just to kind of connect the worlds, even though the main characters have never really meshed together. So I feel like it's kind of a, a multi-dimensional <laughs> regency where every book is set kind of in its own world, but they're right adjacent to the next <laughs> world or <laughs> the Suzanne Enoch multiverse. That's right. <laughs> the S.E. <laughs> Moo. <laughs> your, your books, especially, one of the reasons I love them so much is that they have such punny titles. Um, <laughs> my personal favorite is The Devil Wears Kilts. And Every Duke Has His Day is, of course, a play on Every Dog Has His Day. Uh, are you the, the pun expert responsible for all of these amazing titles? I will say it's a it's a group effort between myself, my agent, and my editor, I did get the previous one, which was something in the air, H-E-I-R. -E mm -hmm. um, my editor is the one who got Every Duke Has His Day. I wanted Bad Dogs and Englishmen to be Oh, <laughs> to that's be so title. cute. And she said, no, we'll offend people. <laughs> we don't want Bad Dogs in the title. So, <laughs> But I do a lot of the punny titles. I love 
that kind of title. I think my favorite from my books is probably Rogue with a Brogue. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and there are a couple of them like that. Yeah. I also was curious too about, um, obviously Regency romance has such a strong fandom and very loyal pop group of people who are just so devoted to the subgenre. But I also kind of feel like it has been a little revitalized in the mainstream uh, conversation and audience right now. Are you seeing that uh, resurgence on your end? I am. And I, you know, I think Julia Quinn and, and Bridgerton, it's one of those, the, the rising sea floats all the boats and my boat is floating a little higher too. I'm getting more first time readers and stuff and it, it's great. I love hooking people in and then hopefully they will stick around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what are you reading right now? Are there any authors or books that inspire you that our author or our audience should check out? Uh, I just turned a book in uh, last Thursday, so I'm not reading at this very moment. Right now, my brain is kind of like styrofoam after you've poked lots of holes in it with a pencil. <laughs> but I've been waiting for uh, Karen Hawkins' new Dove Pond book, which, which comes out the middle of this month. She usually lets me read them ahead of time, and she didn't this time. So I have to wait like you get everybody else. So <laughs> that's what I'm waiting for right now is the new Dove Pond book. Yeah. So is this is this book that you just got done with? Is that um, kind of in the same world ish as Every Duke Has Its Day, or is it kind of a different vibe? No, it's an it's another rom com. Uh, the working title is uh, is the importance of being Earnhurst. Oh, Earnhurst that's being the, the title of the of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, well, I I feel like getting done with a project like that and sending it in has to be such a like release for you of just being like, oh, I'm done. Now it's off to the next step. Yes. Usually it, it's, I turn it in and then it's followed by like a week of just cleaning everything. Cause it like cleans my brain out too. You can almost see the words just leaking <laughs> out of my ears. <laughs> and then when I'm empty, I'm ready to start on the next project. Well, that's very exciting. And also, I will say, too, as you know, I, I brought up the fact that there's a, a dog napping in this book. But I just want to for anyone listening who is a big lover of dogs and couldn't imagine anything going, you know, going not great for dogs. I just assuredly like thank you on behalf of everyone that um, the dogs are OK in this book. <laughs> everyone everyone has a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> So, I know. Um, I started with dog napping. Like it's got to be like fun level dog napping, not terror dog napping. So exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I was just uh, when I started uh, when I started reading it, and the first dog got to, I was like, oh no, where is this going? And then I was like, oh no, this is just you know, <laughs> we're just having fun. So it was it was so cute and so much fun. And um, I, I genuinely, I can't recommend this enough. I feel like this is going to be the one that I am telling everybody in the holiday season to read because I just, you know, if you need a hug, here's the book that'll do that for you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, well, Every Duke Has His Day is right here. It is coming out in September. So if you are a romance reader, if you're not, it doesn't matter. Check it out. You're going to love it. And thank you, Su Suzanne, so much for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I really appreciate it, too.